it is very popular to hate on Marvel and the MCU nowadays, and understandably so. There is no question that the quality has dropped and that they're no longer operating at the same level of success that they used to have. By any metric, whether that's critically, financially, or audience perceptions, the MCU is not the same. And I myself have my own share of criticisms towards the MCU project, like a lack of interconnectivity and planning, overuse of humour, over-reliance on visual effects, and rushed big CGI final fights. But I don't think Marvel are dead. I don't think superhero fatigue has fully hit and I do think there is a way for Marvel to return to a similar level as before. And there is some evidence pointing towards a brighter future for Marvel. And so rather than focus on the negatives, let's look at some of the positive news surrounding Marvel. Hello and welcome to Cinemates, and if you're new here, please subscribe to see more content like this. Despite a rough couple of years for Marvel, with the recent release of X-Men 97 and the upcoming release of Deadpool and Wolverine, it feels like there is more hype and positivity for the MCU than we've had in a long, long time. People are finally excited to talk about the next Marvel project again. Last year was a real mixed bag for Marvel, with some of their worst projects ever, but also some of their best. But despite these good projects, 2023 felt kind of overall meh, and part of the reason reason for this is the amount of projects. We had three movies and three TV shows, and out of these six, only two were consistently great. That leads to a real mixed bag, and it makes us feel like Marvel are focusing too much on quantity and not quality. It makes Marvel feel stretched and not being able to focus on specific projects enough. It makes all of the projects feel like homework and audiences can't watch everything. And people have got bored because there's so much of it, it no longer feels special. But that's about the change. Let's look at the films coming out in 2024. So first up in July, we've got Deadpool and Wolverine and then... And well, that's just it. Just one Marvel Cinematic Universe film across the whole year. Outside of the pandemic, we've not had only one MCU film in a year since the Avengers in 2012. This year, there is only one film. That is a massive break from the MCU for audiences. This will give people time to breathe and miss the MCU. And that might mean people are more willing to see the only MCU film in a year because it's gonna feel like an event. And with cinema prices going up, they don't have to decide which of the three Marvel films they should see in a year. This year, it's it's obvious you're going to see Deadpool. And the buzz around Deadpool feels positive. People feel excited and it feels like a project people want. With two actors who understand their characters, with the backing of the first two solid Deadpool films, and with Disney giving the team the needed R rating and creative control, it feels like a project which has the potential to succeed and not feel like it's pumped out by committee like many of the other recent Marvel projects. And it's coming at the perfect time. Marvel need the win. They need the savior and Deadpool said it himself. He's Marvel Jesus. He can help to get people back on board and if the only MCU film of the year is a great one, that is going to go a long way to boost audience perceptions. Now post Endgame, the movies have fallen under the multiverse saga and it feels like the multiverse has been an idea that audiences got tired of very quickly. Films and series both inside and outside the MCU have really focused on the multiverse in recent years. And while it was interesting, fresh and fun at the time, it felt like it was overdone and it got burnt out very quickly. And with the main villain of the multiverse Kang potentially no longer on the scene, we don't even know if the original idea of this phase will get seen through to the end. Sure, Marvel have had some success with the multiverse, but they've also had some failures. However, Deadpool and Wolverine is very clearly a multiverse movie and it's managed to excite people about the multiverse again, which I think shows that the multiverse saga can work if it's done in a way that interests people. I think it kind of works with Deadpool better because he's a character who breaks the fourth wall. He's aware of the different actors that have played different roles and so the idea of variants in different universes can tie into the character, his humour and the story very easily. It feels quite natural. Compared with something like Multiverse of Madness where the cameos felt very forced in and added after the story was planned or something like Ant-Man where his usual small scale comedic films don't mesh well with separate realms and multiversal villains. But it's good to see a lot more buzz around the multiverse again because Marvel are doomed to fail if people just do not fundamentally buy into the idea of the multiverse saga. And with Loki season 2 and X-Men 97 being well received and Deadpool 3 having a lot of excitement, I think they can restore people's faith in the multiverse saga because personally I'm definitely more positive about the saga going forwards. With only one film this year, it means that other Marvel projects are all on TV. Now we've already had Echo this year which was fine, it wasn't a perfect show by any means, it had a lot of the same issues as the other Marvel shows and parts of it did feel cut up and reshot. But there were parts of it that felt like it had more of a vision, trying to emulate the Netflix 
epic Marvel darker tone. So while it had its issues, at least it showed Marvel try to get fans interested in the project by connecting it to the Netflix show. And if Marvel allow more of the darker Netflix style in other projects, I think fans will get on board. The other aspect of Echo that worked was it began to set up the groundwork for the saga outside of the multiverse. Since Endgame, it doesn't really feel like we've had many projects just taking place in the classic grounded feeling of the MCU. Looking at the recent projects from the previous main characters of the Infinity Saga, Black Widow took place in the past, WandaVision took place in the bubble, Ant-Man took place in another realm, Doctor Strange took place across the multiverse, Guardians takes place in space, so does Thor, Spider-Man was focused on multiverse characters, and all the other new characters feel very separate. It only really felt like Falcon and the Winter Soldier and Hawkeye, which took place in the kind of classic grounded feeling of the MCU that was really set up for the first three phases. It used to feel like the whole universe was built around S.H.I.E.L.D. and the Earth level Avengers and everything branched off from there. But since Endgame, we've not really got a feeling for what the state of the Avengers are and everything has felt so large and a bit disconnected. But it does feel like we're beginning to get a sense that there is a story outside of the multiverse. Echo set up the grounded, grittier side of the world with Kingpin potentially acting as the main villain for that story. Hopefully that will be continued in Daredevil and potentially in future Spider-Man films. And with Captain America 4 and the Thunderbolts both coming out in 2025, I think we might finally get a better look at the state of the normal world of the MCU and what this might mean for the Avengers. With potentially Thunderbolt Ross being an antagonistic president and then the government funding a much darker version of the Avengers, I think this will give us a better insight into the ground level of the MCU, which I think has sorely been missing. And again, that's something I'm really excited for. And it will help us to connect back with this world, the Avengers and the new characters on the roster. After Echo, we've just watched X-Men 97 and it was phenomenal. Easily the best Marvel Studios Disney Plus TV show. It worked on every level. The animation was fantastic. It was respectful to the original show, but built on it. It was mature. It took itself seriously. It understood the characters and the source material it was adapting. It was well paced and it didn't rush the finale. And it felt like a singular vision by a creative team. It didn't feel restricted by the studio and interfered with. It didn't feel like an MCU project. And it made people say, we want more from this world, like a continuation of the Spider-Man 90s animated series. It gave people that feeling the first Iron Man did of connecting with characters and then wanting to see that universe expand. And Marvel really have hit the jackpot here because they clearly want content for their streaming service, but more MCU content means spreading the universe too thin, diluting the brand and giving people too much. Now they have a new universe that they can create content in. If Marvel want to give us more content but not have it affect the MCU, they've just shown us how and where to do it while still being able to package it into the multiverse saga. I really hope Marvel learned the right lessons from X-Men 97 because it solved basically every issue that the other Disney Plus Marvel shows have and it shows when Marvel give a project creative freedom it can lead to fantastic results. Next up we have Agatha All Along, a spin-off from WandaVision. Now it's not really a show people ask for, why is this who Marvel are focusing on rather than other important characters? But WandaVision is one of the better Marvel shows and it has the same creative team behind it. Agatha was a fun character so it could work. We just don't know much about what this show is right now. While we don't have set release dates yet, scheduled for the rest of the year are Eyes of Wakanda and Your Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man. Now Eyes of Wakanda is an animated show about the history of Wakanda in the MCU and Spider-Man is an animated show set in the multiverse that while has some similar actors to the MCU is very separate which may allow it to have some of the same creative freedom we got with X-Men 97 by taking place outside the main story of the MCU. So if we look at this year's TV schedule as a whole X-Men 97 and Spider-Man aren't really MCU projects. Yes they're made by Marvel Studios and they take place in the multiverse but they won't saturate the MCU market because they're their own things and their own universes. And with Eyes of Wakanda being animated and not important to the current time of the MCU a lot of people will feel like they can skip that. Again this will help to not saturate the market because these projects won't feel like homework and if Disney Plus really wants content I think they should focus on more Marvel stuff like this rather than the proper MCU. And so in terms of series we only have two live action series set in the MCU properly and even these feel like they could be skipped. Echo and Agatha two characters spinning off from shows of other more well-known characters. While yes this could potentially dilute the importance of projects it also draws less attention and people may feel less overwhelmed by the number of projects this year. I mean how many people even remembered Echo came out this year? And so it really feels like Deadpool and Wolverine is the only MCU project that matters this year. This compares with last year where before we saw the projects it felt like each one could have some impact on the overall story of the MCU but most of them ended up being superfluous anyway. Now this smaller schedule wasn't always the case. We were originally supposed to have Captain in America Brave New World released this year and the Thunderbolts and there was even a time when Fantastic Four and Blade had release dates in 2024 and same with the shows Daredevil, Ironheart and Marvel Zombies originally all had a 2024 release date as well. Now I know a lot of these projects had production issues and external factors that have 
slowed them down. But all of this is to say 2024 was originally going to be a massively stacked year, perhaps one of the most oversaturated MCU years ever, but it ended up being one of the quietest. And whether this was intentional or not, I think some time off, some time away from the MCU for audiences, whilst Marvel really work out their plan and their issues, can only be a good thing. And it's not just Marvel doing this, DC are in the same boat with Joker 2 being the only DC film this year. Two R-rated superhero movies being the only product from the major superhero studios is interesting and it can only help to take away from some of the superhero fatigue. Now, unfortunately, Sony didn't get the memo. As always, they don't know what they're doing and they're five years behind the competition with their busiest superhero year ever releasing three different movies. And based on their track record, there's a high chance these will be bad. And that's only going to add to the superhero fatigue and and that damage may end up trickling onto the MCU as many general audiences just don't know the difference between the studios. Now there is a big asterisk around this year's quieter schedule and that's the fact that a lot of these projects were delayed due to production issues, most notably Daredevil Born Again and Captain America Brave New World. Now I'm actually jumping in here while I edit this video because we've heard a lot more news about this since I recorded the initial video. Originally we thought Captain America Brave New World was having a troubled production because it was reported that the movie was scheduled to have at least four months of reshoots which is a massive amount of time to reshoot, even longer than something like Joss Whedon's Justice League. And this led us to believe that the film was having major issues. However, in the last week or so, we have heard that the reshoots are only taking 22 days. 22 days of reshoots is not extensive. It's relatively average. And so don't get worried by this. Apparently these are less extensive and cheaper than the Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness and the Marvel's reshoots. Every Marvel movie has reshoots and Loki season two was the first MCU project to have no reshoots ever. The finale for the first Iron Man was changed in post-production and one of the most iconic lines in Endgame was added in reshoots. So reshoots are not a bad thing. Most movies have them and almost every Marvel project has them. And we just never used to even realize it. So basically there is even more positive news that the production of Captain America 4 is not as troubled as we originally thought. And it seems like the delays to this film were mainly due to the strikes and not due to the massive reshoots and the rewrite like we initially thought. Now back to the original version of this video where my original points no longer apply as much to Cap 4, but they still apply to Daredevil. Now Daredevil Born Again has been delayed to undertake massive changes to the script after filming had already begun. And on the surface, that is not a good thing. How can these projects get so far into production and shooting before someone said this isn't working? So surely this is a bad thing that the projects are being rewritten and reshot. And yes, it may show a decrease in Marvel's quality control, possibly due to their resources being more stretched nowadays. However, it is a good thing that someone stepped in. Despite the increased cost of millions of dollars, someone has put their foot down and said this isn't working. Let's spend money to fix this. And that is a good thing because a lot of studios would just pump out their garbage and move on to the next movie. But I think Marvel are beginning to realize that every bad film they've released really damages their reputation and the hard work that they've built up over 10 years. Instead, it may be more cost effective for them to spend more money delaying and fixing a project than releasing a bad film and facing low box office returns and reputational risk. There is some good news to find in the fact that Marvel are beginning to look at their projects and say what is and isn't working and spend the money to fix them because if someone looked at quantum mania or secret invasion and said this isn't working let's delay it and fix it rather than rushing reshoots to the ending to try to meet the set release date it may have really helped those projects and prevented the reputational risk the point i'm trying to make is that yes while something has clearly fundamentally gone wrong with the original draft of daredevil we can take the reshoots and the rewrites as a positive sign that marvel are trying their best to improve their quality going forward by delaying and rewriting rather than rushing reshoots and producers re editing the films to meet the deadline because I personally would happily accept longer production times with less projects each year if it means the projects are going to be better quality and that's what we need from Marvel. We need better consistent quality like they used to have and it seems like they might be trying to fix that. Tying all of this together, yes Marvel have made a lot of mistakes recently but I think there's some evidence that they're beginning to become aware of these issues and they're trying to fix them. With less projects each year there will be less saturation. Each project may feel more important and have time to breathe which may lead to people feeling more inclined to see each specific project rather than being overwhelmed by the sheer number of MCU projects. Projects with issues are being fixed from the ground up rather than quick reshoots and editing which has damaged a lot of recent content. But Marvel need to remember to keep it creative focused and not compromise any creative visions because a lot of the fatigue is coming from repetitive and generic projects influenced by producers, not creators. With the positive reception around Guardians 3, Loki, X-Men 97 and the positive buzz for Deadpool and Wolverine 
screen, along with the recent successes of other surprise movies at the box office breaking away the typical blockbuster movies, Marvel have to realise that to get people to the cinema and pay money, they need to give them more unique experiences. And to do that, you have to trust a creative team and not interfere with their project. There is evidence now to show that Marvel are beginning to improve on all of these aspects and that people may be getting back on board with the idea of the multiverse with some promising projects while the grounded level of the MCU is also beginning to emerge. I think if all of this works, it can address superhero fatigue because the problem isn't superhero movies. The problem is bad movies. And with all of this adding together, I'm beginning to feel more positive about Marvel again. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you're feeling more positive about Marvel or do you think it's dead and that they can't recover. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to see more content like this going forwards. But for now, thanks for watching Cinemaze.